CJ, your favorite scuba diver here with Deep South Divers. I am working on one of my dry suits today. I want to talk to you about the exhaust valve modification that I'm going to do on this suit. This right here is very typical of what you see with a bear dry suit, and you see the bear logo in the middle of it. Um, if you have a DUI or if you have a Santee, you may recognize this exhaust valve. This exhaust valve is made by SciTech. What I'm interested in doing is I'm interested in, <clears throat> in reducing the profile that you see here. So this thing is like an inch and a quarter tall, it's sort of a pain in the neck, it, it sticks out a lot. When I get it hung on the, uh, on the uh, back plate and wing or on the BCD when I take that on and off. Uh, also it has a feature on it that I don't particularly use. So this right here, this exhaust valve is adjustable. Right now it is in the fully open position, meaning that it will freely breathe air out and no water in. And then what I can do is I can increase the resistance of that by screwing it closed. So you hear it clicking and at some point or another I'll, I'll put a link up where I show you uh, I show what it's like to actually rebuild one of these things. Um, but all the way closed pretty much is locked down and won't vent anything out. So you can blow the dry suit up or do whatever you want to do. There's a reason why uh, dry suits have this. And that is so that you can um, so that you can increase or decrease the buoyancy inside of the suit. In other words, uh, you're basically using the dry suit as your buoyancy control device or your BCD. And um, that's not really something that most divers do. Most divers, and I'm going to say a good 80 or 90 percent of them, use a backplate and wing or a BCD for their buoyancy, and they minimize the amount of air inside of the suit. And so they dive with them fully open. So I kind of like that feature and I actually get annoyed at the fact that sometimes it gets bumped and it's, and it's no, no longer fully open. So my intention today is to, uh, is to change out this, uh, this exhaust valve into something that's much smaller, much sleeker, uh, is non-adjustable, fully open, and even better yet is a lot less likely to leak and I'll show you exactly how that happens in just a second. Alright, so in order to get this exhaust valve off, um, what, I, what I do is I open up the suit. This one is very nicely equipped with a plastic YKK plastic zip, uh, very similar to the TI zip or TIE zip, and uh, it moves very easily. And what I'll do is I'll reach inside of the suit here and actually turn this inside out so that you can see what this exhaust valve looks like on the other side. So this just unscrews, it's that simple. What I'll do here is I'll hold the exhaust valve on this side and I hold it around the base of the ring. They actually sell a tool for this, but I like just using my fingers. So I'll hold it around the base of the ring and unscrew this part from the inside. And it just comes right off, just like that. There's the inside. There, right there is an anti-friction ring. That is so that you can screw that tight. And then the top of the valve just pulls right out. So that's it. It's in three pieces. All right, so you can see here what the three parts of this valve are. Right? Here's the outside. This has the adjustment mechanism in it. The tighter you go, the more resistance it has to, to exhausting. And there's also a check valve, which is that, that valve right there. You can actually see the clear rubber nipple part of that check valve sticking out. So there's two valves in there. One is uh, tightened down, and if you if you loosen it all the way, it's basically not even there, and the only thing that's keeping water from flowing into your suit is that check valve. That gets gunked up, and the other, the adjustable valve gets gunked up as well. The problem that I had as a professional diver is that, um, is that the, you know, I was diving in salty, muddy, nasty environments and uh, you know I would be uh, scraping barnacles or uh, using a, an underwater chainsaw and there was particulate in the water, lots of sediment and junk in the water and that stuff would kind of get in between the veins here, go into the valve mechanisms either, uh, either in the adjustable valve or in the check valve that I showed you um, and it would make these leak. So here we had uh, a, a valve that simply wasn't reliable. And in order to try to make this valve reliable, I added one of these to the inside. 
This right here is a is a is a sponge, and I've literally pulled the sponge part off, and I've left the scouring part on, and I have cut it, and I would put it inside of the valve. And what that ended up looking like was it looked like this. You can see it's a pretty cool looking op, uh, you know, uh, application, and uh, this would help to keep some of that particulate out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the valve now the problem with this was that it was very difficult to rinse out at the end of the day and so you know I couldn't really get to the uh, to the valves and stuff on the inside specifically that that check valve that I showed you earlier and so salt would dry in there and it would make that leak anyway so although I didn't have a, a problem with particulate um, the uh, the valve would eventually leak on the second or third diet anyway. So I brought this idea to SciTech and I said, hey man, you know, I'm putting these in there and it sort of keeps things clean at least for a couple of dives. What do you think of something like that? And what they did was they developed uh, another valve. This is, this is a very similar uh, SciTech valve. Uh, it's a slightly lower profile valve. But inside, they put a stainless steel screen. So you can see the screen there. And that is all something that uh, SciTech and I worked on and developed together. The problem with this is, is that th those holes in the screen help keep some of the larger particulate out, but still not all of it. So this eventually leaked too. So uh, just like this here, um, pretty much about 20 minutes into every single dive, I could get one of these to leak. Um, with the uh, filter installed, it was about every third dive. Okay, so I could pull this apart at the end of the day, clean it out, and put it back together. Pretty much rely on this pretty much every day, and that was pretty good. Um, but if, if I didn't clean it out every single day, by the third day, this thing would leak. Um, the, the system that they sent me here, I could go about five dives um, between cleaning. So this was pretty good too. Still retaining that uh, adjustability, right? So all the way closed, you get a lot of resistance to flow out. There is no flow in, but you get a lot of resistance to flow out and uh, all the way open. And it would be, uh, it was very easy to flow out. Nothing would flow in. Here is the modification that, uh, that I've gone into, and this has worked out really, really, really well. And it sort of takes this whole idea of using a screen uh, and sort of amplifies it. Uh, it minimizes the size of the exhaust valve, and it gives me a triple check valve. So there's actually three valves in there, none of which have any resistance, but all three valves are in there, helping to prevent water from flowing back in. Um, so if one happened to get clogged up with particulate, the second certainly wouldn't. And if that one happened to get clogged up with particulate, the third most definitely wouldn't. Um, with, a, with a hose out every single time uh, at the end of the dive, uh, I've had these go for weeks and weeks and weeks without leaks. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever think of a, of a leak uh, but it, uh, that, that I've gotten with it. But at any rate, uh, this right here, this is actually uh, SciTech's newest P-valve. This right here is the top half of a Trigon P-valve, and it in itself has two check valves. But I'm combining this and a standard SciTech cuff dump, which is interesting because the cuff dump, the cuff dump, actually, I'm gonna take this, this top half here and uh, set that to the side because it's the bottom half that we're using. So the bottom half, has a check valve in it, exactly the same as the check valves that are in these exhaust valves and the twin check valves that are in the Trigon P valve. So when you screw all of these together, guess what? You get three, you get a triple redundant check valve and the whole system fits right in a standard SciTech hole. This is a standard SciTech docking port. This is what uh, any suit that comes with a SciTech exhaust valve like what you see right here is going to have this port. So in order to be able to do this modification, it's very simple. All you need is a standard SciTech cuff dump, the bottom half of that, and the top half of the Trigon P-valve, and those will go right together. I like to add a, um, a uh, 
an anti-friction ring to the back side. So I'll show you exactly how this installs. So what I'll do here is I'll make sure that my that my uh, my my docking port here, the rubber docking port, it's nice and clean. Uh, there's lots of uh, lots of times these areas right here will have some some dirt and, and maybe some dried uh, some dried salt and that kind of stuff. And I'll get both sides of that docking port. I'll show you the back side here. There's the back side. So let me kind of wipe that down. And you can install everything wet. You don't need it to dry, so long as you're using clean, fresh water, of course. I'll put this system together just like so. Insert my hand, and if you look inside of that hole there, you can see my hand. And I'm going to just line everything up and put this right in. So I'll even turn this inside out here so you can see what's going on on the inside. All right, so we'll put the whole thing together just like this. You see that um, my suit is a little bit thicker than most because it's a, it's a hyper-compressed neoprene suit. But take the bottom half of this, uh, of this, uh, of the cuff dump, put it right on there. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not gonna cross-thread it. All right. And it goes together. This really wasn't designed for this, but I love it anyway. Um, just FYI, if if you don't have a, a the bottom half of the cuff dump, you can use a, a standard uh, the exhaust valve's standard bottom. That'll that'll screw in also. But the the disadvantage of that is that there's no valve in this. That's so you you'd end up with a uh, with a twin redundant. Uh, check valve system rather than a triple redundant check valve system. That third check valve comes inside of this, uh, the bottom half of that cuff dump. But uh, at any rate, uh, I, I screw it together and the Trigon comes with this uh, metal piece here for us to hold the Trigon P valve in place and give it a good hard crank on the inside while I'm holding that in place. But that's it, that is a triple redundant check valve, uh, not adjustable, always open, like the way, that, the way that I like it. And it's only about a quarter of an inch tall, so it's very slick, it's very smooth, and it never leaks. And the reason is, is because it is triple redundant. So there you go, it's a great modification. It is expensive, I think the Trigon P-Valve is going for about $180. Uh, the cuff dump is probably going for another $30 or $50. So you've probably got uh, two or $250 invested in making this modification. But it is totally dry all the time, no matter what kind of water you're in. And it is uh, non-adjustable, very sleek, and I've had absolutely no problems with this. I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.